Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin, and this is another five-minute GarageBand expert where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for mixing and recording in GarageBand in 30 days. This is the next to last video in the series, and as we're finishing the series, we're talking about finishing our mixes, finishing our songs. And this video is gonna be all about the final step in finishing your mixes. So you've already gone through the whole six step process to a professional mix and garage band. You've already done all six steps. And now we're talking about those final little tweaks, the mix revision process, where we're checking on other systems, we're listening on our AirPods, on other headphones, in our cars, wherever you listen to music. And we're making those final little tweaks. And if you're anything like me, this process can drag on forever. You can just keep fiddling with stuff forever and ever. Sometimes I've literally spent months and years fiddling with different songs. And the problem with that is that at some point, we stop making anything better. We're just changing things now. So what changed for me when this all turned around for me and I started finishing more music and in my opinion, getting better mixes was when I started approaching this with a plan, a very intentional approach to finishing my mixes. It's always a three-step process. And I'm gonna share that exact process with you today and I'm gonna challenge you to go try it on your mixes. Okay, so the first step is still inside GarageBand. We're still inside GarageBand and we are pulling in a reference track. I did a whole nother video on reference tracks in the series. I'll link to it above me here. In that video, we talk about how to pull in reference tracks and use them. In this component, when we're talking about revisions, there's only two things with the reference track that you wanna focus on. What is the overall tone of the reference track and how does it compare to my tone? We're thinking EQ, how is, do I have enough low end in my mix? Do I need to turn up the bass guitar a little bit or EQ the bass to have a little bit more low end? Or other components of the overall tone. Is mine too bright, too harsh? Whatever it may be, focus on the tone, then focus on the volume of the key elements. Thinking, kick, snare, vocals, your lead vocals, uh, any sort of lead line, a lead guitar, a synth, whatever your song has. Compare that to your reference track and really focus on how is my volume relative to theirs. Make sure that those are both similar. They're gonna be different songs, so they're gonna sound different, but we just wanna make sure that they would sound close enough if they were back to back on a playlist. So think that, keep that in mind. Don't just try to perfect it or I totally emulate their track, but try to get it similar enough that it would sound similar if it was back to back on a playlist. Then you're done. Then you're moving on to step two, and in step two, you're finally getting outside of GarageBand. So you're exporting your track, you're putting a limiter on, like we talked about yesterday, and you're taking your track and you're gonna pick two systems to listen to it on. And on both systems, you're gonna to listen to it twice. So for me, I typically use my car and my AirPods, the two main places that I listen to music other than in my studio. And in both places, you're gonna first listen to a reference track all the way through. It could be the same reference track or a different reference track, but something similar to your song. Listen to it all the way through and then immediately into your song. Balance the volume if you have to, and then focus on the same key elements. We're gonna be focusing on the tone and then the volume of our kick, snare, vocal, lead lines, whatever it is. Make sure that all of that works. Now in this step, because we're no longer in GarageBand, you wanna have either a notepad or a note on your phone ready to go. And you just wanna note any changes that you wanna make. Be specific here. Then once you've done the referencing relative to a song, focus on the internal mix, focus on just your mix. Does this guitar need to come up a little bit in verse two? Does the vocal on the chorus need to come up one decibel? Be as specific in your notes as you can here. You really wanna make sure that you know exactly what you wanna do. And then once you have all those notes, you wanna go back into GarageBand and you wanna make only those changes. Don't make more changes, don't just fiddle with anything, only make those changes. Then step three, repeat the process. Do this one more time, do all the same thing, make the very specific notes relative to the reference tracks, relative to your internal mix. Once you've made those very specific notes, go back into GarageBand, do just those things, and then you're done. If you didn't need to go back for that final step, if you felt like you totally nailed it after making those, don't go back into GarageBand and make any more changes. Just be done. But then you're done. Send it on to be mastered or master it yourself, however you're doing it. Export it from GarageBand. 
put it into your mastering session, finish your song, you're done with the song, congratulations, that's amazing, and then share it with me here. I wanna hear it. Once you've finished that track, I wanna hear it. So be sure to share it with me. And if you're at this point that you're trying to get a more professional mix in GarageBand and don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix in GarageBand, be sure to download that below. It's completely free and it will help you get a more professional sounding mix in GarageBand. If this video is helpful for you, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with the final video in the 5-Minute GarageBand Expert Series. <laughs>